Welcome to Good News Rhode Island, the show about Rhode Island and the people and places and events that make Rhode Island a great place to live. There are so many people building our communities, and each week we try to interview someone who's done a great thing behind the scenes. I guess I have to say that I think Manton Avenue Project is doing something really wonderful behind the scenes, and sometimes in front of the scenes, in front of the proscenium, as they say. Um, and Meg Sullivan is here. Uh, the executive director of Manton Avenue Project. We had them on earlier this year and decided to bring back the playwrights and their plays to show you the kind of thing that's happening in the Manton Avenue Project. So welcome again, Meg. Thank you and, so much. And um, we welcome also all the, um, the directors, or excuse me, the, the playwrights here, and pretty soon we'll meet the actors as well. Thanks so, for having us. Oh, so you're welcome. I'm glad you're here. So tell me a little bit again, just to fill people in a little bit, sure. what is the Manton Avenue Project? The Manton Avenue Project is a program, um, primarily after school program based in Olneyville. We uh, work with kids starting in the third grade and our mission is to unleash the creative voices and unique potential of kids living in Olneyville through playwriting and we unite them with adult artists who help them create original theater together. And so the, the kids come to you in the afternoon after yes, school. Yes, we have. And they spend time on holidays, I assume, and, and yep. um, vacation times. We have five different programs all throughout the year, um, working with kids after school, teaching playwriting, and then over intensive playwriting weekends, we match each child with a dramaturg, an adult dramaturg who works with them one-on-one -on -one to help them craft their play. And then we take the play and we don't edit it at all. We give the play to, again, adult actors and directors who are all volunteers from our amazing state of Rhode Island um, who volunteer their time through um, incredible generosity and help us put these brilliant plays on stage for public audiences. And where is your stage? We actually have a clubhouse now um, in Olneyville um, in a what once was an abandoned storefront has been renovated by Olneyville Housing Corporation into a beautiful space where we have our classes, where I have my office, the kids can come after school and hang out. Um, and we usually use the theater at the Met School. They're very generous with us over on Public Street. And so anyone who wants tickets and wants to come see can look online to see yes. what you're playing now. Yes. And the name of the plays are often things that people will not know because right. they have just been written. All brand new plays. And then they find out when to come and just call you for tickets. Is yeah, and you can visit us at mantonavenueproject.org or give us a call. It's 401-331-7007. And our next plays, all of our plays take place around a particular theme. So the, the plays you're going to see today is about bullying and the kids um, for this particular program, collaborated on one play about the issue of bullying, um, really important topic about um, becoming an upstander in a situation of bullying. So the kids were really brilliant about really facing the issue head on, not skirting it at all, being a, really a tough issue 
They really did a beautiful job with this play. So that um, is what we're going to share with you today. Our next play is going to be about music and social change. And each of the playwrights is going to be writing a song about an issue that's important to them. And they're each going to be writing an individual play around that topic. And those are going to be our first time playwrights, so our third grade playwrights. Wow, what an opportunity for people. Yeah. So tell me again your philosophy of the Manton Avenue Project. Our biggest philosophy is that every child has a voice and that their voice and their imagination and their imaginative um, and creative uh, world is worthy of being presented on stage. That those voices and those um, dreams and those, you know, that creativity that we really want to support um, really deserves to be given a public uh, space to, to be seen, to be discussed, to be a part of the public discussion. So our philosophy is all about encouraging kids creative thinking, encouraging their imaginations through playwriting. And we really feel like theater has such a wonderful, um, you know, opportunity because it's it's giving, literally giving space um, to these kids' voices in a really public way. All right, well, why don't we try the play and okay. let's see the play. Great. Play is the thing. <laughs> now you. tell us the name of the play again. Yes, this is um, from our tag team program. This is Be My Ally, the Upstander play. And it's one play written by eight wonderful playwrights. All right, we're anxious to see it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh no, there goes my weekend of awesomeness. It's Bob. Maybe if I don't look at him, he will go away. And maybe if I close my eyes and hold my breath, I will disappear. Here goes nothing. <laughs> well, well, well. Look who we have here. Peter Francis Suarez. I remember I hated this kid for a long time, but I don't remember why. Oh yeah, now I remember. He thinks he's so much better and smarter than everyone else. He's never been good at sports, always loves school, always the teacher's pet. But guess what? He's not better than everyone else. For example, he's poor, his dad's a drunk, he has to walk dogs for money that he ha probably has to hand over to his drunk dad. I bet he can't even do one push-up. What's he doing here? Hey, Peter, how you doing? Oh, no, he saw me. I asked you a question. Hey, Bob, I'm fine. How are you doing? I uh, you know, I'm good. Haven't been evicted lately, you? There he is, just like I remember him. I gotta go, I gotta get the dogs back to their owners. The owners can wait. I uh, just wanna ask you a few questions. So, uh, how come I don't see you at school? Oh, we go to the same school? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. So how's your dad? Heard he split on your family. Is he in rehab? Is he living on the streets? I heard he was arrested for drug use. He must not care about you anymore. What about your mom? Does she have a job or is she just lying around letting you do all the work? How's that fine looking sister of yours doing? How dare you! Don't touch me! Sorry about your own family! I love you, I really do, but you gotta stop doing this. We are never going to have any friends if you keep bullying me. Shut them. up, Spike! You can't tell me what to do, I own you! I told you to stop calling me Spike! I want you to call me Sweetie! Are you serious? Your big top dog is like your own oh, 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 Okay, 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 let's just forget this happened and go home, okay? Okay. Okay. I hope he lets this go. I'm not gonna let this go. It'll be like father, like son. He won't let this go. Hey, ugly. What do you mean a snitch for? <laughs> what do you mean? I'm not a snitch. I see you talking to Miss Cat. I was talking to Miss Cat about my grades. Sure you were. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> I will never snitch on you. You think you're so kind? 
Then why would you take my dog? I bet you he's starving to death because you're so poor. <laughs> I'll try so much harder to stop. Bob, I don't know if I can forgive you. You've been really mean to me. You hurt me. Spread rumors saying that I had a crush on Francesca and that my dad was in rehab. Told people really mean rumors. And during recess, you beat me up so now I'm limping. I can forgive you, but it'll take some time. It's just that my family is torn apart and my mom left and my dad is really mean to me and Spike left, and I don't think that she's ever going to want to come back. She likes being called sweetie. Oh. So I feel like 
I lost everything in my life and it just makes me feel so, so sad. Why do you bully? Because I see you and your mom and your sister and you seem so happy. And I just want a connection with my family like that. And I heard what you said at the park. Like father, like son, he's never gonna let this go. And I, that hurt. Peter, Bob's not the only one bullying, you are too. Oh, I didn't know I hurt you. But you don't have to be mean because you're jealous. Bob, if you need anything, you can come to us. Don't worry, because we will help. But Peter can't forgive you now. And, and we don't want to be mean. We want to help, even if you made my brother feel bad about himself. Thank you, but I'm still missing one thing, and that's my spike. <laughs> oh, I mean, sweetie, I just love her so much. Bob! Oh, sweetie! Bob! I love you so much, and I want you to be happy, but in order to do that, you have got to let go. You gotta clean your room and, and throw away the cigarette butts and bottles and, and stop bullying kids so we can have friends and be happy. And don't worry, because I will be there for you. I'll try to move on, but it's gonna be hard. Sorry, Peter. It's okay. Just don't do it anymore. I'm not gonna bully anymore! I'll try, you just, you just have to give me some time. I have to say, watching that play, I remembered a lot of my own time in school. And I also really related to the way everyone was acting in it because you wrote it so well that I could imagine myself being any one of those characters. And so I appreciate that writing, that kind of writing. So I'm going to ask you to introduce yourselves and tell me what the scene was that you worked on the most. My understanding is that you all work together to write this play, but each one of you had a separate scene, and then you brought them all together and sort of blended them. So mm -hmm. I'll start with you, and you're Nicole, is that right? Delasia. Uh, Delasia, okay. My name's Delasia, and the scene I wrote about Oza and Sweetie slash, slash Spike introduced herself and talked about Peter's room. Okay, and she was the sympathetic character, wasn't she? Okay, all right. My name is Carmen, and my my play was about Peter introducing himself and telling about um his life and about his family. Okay, so he was telling us the real facts, and other facts were being said about him because he was bu being bullied. All right. The scene that I wrote. Oh, hi. My name is Isis, and the scene that I wrote was about cyber bullying. And so that was when, um, when Bob, he put mean stuff about Peter on face map. That's what we made about Facebook and maps. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and that, that's just as hurtful as having somebody say something in front of you, in front of a whole lot of people, isn't it? Because so many people read it, and then they think, if it's written down, it must be true and there's no way to change it. Okay, you have a mic. Hi, my name is Nicole, and the scene I wrote about was the last scene, and it's where the problem gets solved and how Peter and Bob make up. Did you like writing about the solution? Yeah. That's great. And uh, collaboration, what does that mean to you? Like working as a team. Okay, and you certainly did with that. Okay, would you pass the mic? Hi, my name is Stephanie, and the, the scene I wrote about was about how Peter and Bob met for like the first time after Peter moved, and Peter didn't know that he was going to meet Bob there, so he was really surprised, and that's where the, the fight started. Okay, and how did you have that tension? How did they start to fight? Because Bob remembered Peter and how much he like really hated him, so he started saying bad stuff about Peter at the park. Okay, so when somebody says something mean about you, your temptation is to say something mean as well, isn't it? Mm -hmm. 
rather than trying to ratchet down the, the tension, but to, rather you raise the tension, right? Okay, you've been very patient, Jose. How about you? <laughs> um, my name is Jose, and the play that I wrote was about Julie's monologue. And could you tell me a little bit about it? It was like about, she talked about her family and her job and how life is in a family and like the situation she is in. So it was pretty honest talk, wasn't it? Yeah. And you had to, you had to take out anything that was imaginative and sort of make it really down to earth, didn't you? And you did a great job, I'm sure. Okay. Now, the actors. You are all here. It's Friday afternoon. You're all here acting, using the words of these kids. Um, it must be a very powerful experience because I have to be honest with you. Our society, our, the way we run our communities, is that we really don't have kids' voices very much. What we hear is mainly grown-ups and mainly people who have a power position, so they're the mayor or whatever. But we don't hear the average person, and we don't certainly hear the average kids to see, hear you write what you're thinking about or what you've heard or what you imagine is pretty amazing. So I'm going to pass this to the mean guy here. <laughs> and you Thank can you. introduce yourself, actually. Uh, my name is Nicole Maynard. Um, do you want me to pass it down? No. Um, this so talk. <laughs> how, how did it, how did it um, f affect you playing a role of a bully in a school? Do you remember bullying from when you were young? I do. I really do. Um, I ha it, ooh, it was hard. It was, um, it was hard to play the bully, but what they did so well was they wrote um, a redeeming quality in me. You know, there are reasons why I was bullying and that everybody, like bullies can change, right? And that I changed at the end and I was going to try really hard, you know? So they just did an amazing job and I feel honored to be able to play Bob. Thank you. Mm -hmm. One of the scenes we didn't see was a scene about Bob's story mm -hmm. and what his history was so that we really get a sense that he's lost his mom, she's no longer with the family. He has a really difficult relationship with his dad and he has this dog, Sweetie, Spike, who he really has found this special close bond with. And so because we, we really have a sense of empathy for Bob and I think one of the most important things playwriting does is it inspires empathy in, in, the, in the writer and then that's what theater can do, right? Empathy for the audience. So. Um, I, I was really impressed with what you all did, was, you know, really write characters that we could all empathize with. So you have to stand everywhere in the room and, and work yeah. through every character if you're going to be the playwright, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Hi, um, I'm Sweetie. Kelly Sai, and I did play Spike, which is what Bob called mm -hmm. Spike, although she was really a girl and wanted to become uh, be called Sweetie. So. Um, yeah, I just remember the very first time we read this script um, in rehearsals, I was just blown away by the character development. Mm -hmm. I, I know that they had, um, in the classroom, been having a lot of guests come in. They really studied bullying and, and kind of found all sides of it. And um, the one thing I noticed about this play is they got it all in there. And it made me think about things that I wouldn't have normally thought about. And, and I know that the first night we did it in front of a live audience, oh. we were all very emotional. Yeah. It was, it, it hit us, um, you know, especially the moment where the, the kids all stand up mm -hmm. and, um, you stand know, they, with they you. Stand yeah. with yeah. A, yeah, against Bob and, and how we also choose to help Bob um, uh -huh. and move past that bullying. So I'm really, really proud of them. Is it true that adults still bully each other? I think we do. Yeah. Yeah. I think we do. I think we could learn something from your play. Definitely. Do you want to tell, somebody want to tell um, what happens when we, when you ask, when Julie asks them, everyone to stand up? Um, it wasn't just you that stood up, right? Do you, does somebody want to explain what happened? Yeah. Nice. Whoever. What happened when Julie spoke up was that, was that since everybody bullies, she like really wanted to help because mostly people are bystanders instead of upstanders. 
and they just sit there and watch people get bullied. So then the whole audience stood up. So it oh. wasn't just the kids, yeah. it was yeah. everyone in the whole <laughs> audience. So we were all, I mean the kids, everybody was very emotional that day because it was really powerful to see a hundred people standing up. Mm -hmm. That's very moving. And it's not very often that a playwright gets that kind of response from an audience who thinks they're passively watching. Right. Mm -hmm. So they were really engaged with you. And we did have a talk back afterwards, and um, a lot of the audience members said that, um, you know, they wouldn't necessarily stand up. You know, it, it felt very hard for them to be the one to stand up because sometimes... They stood in the background. Hard. Yeah, you, you, you worry that... Am, am I going to be picked on now because I stood up? So it was very powerful to have a whole room full of people do that. Okay, we need to keep moving. Okay. So here. I'm Melissa Panic, and I play Peter Francis Suarez. And I'm really proud to be a part of this empowering play. And I'm proud of these kids. And it was very um, moving to me to see... Peter pulling up away and hiding in his room and not wanting to talk to anyone, even his brother, who was very supportive, sister, uh, sorry, <laughs> sister, was very supportive. We only have three minutes, but it just seems to me that when we are hurt, we crawl away. Right. There's and that fear of maybe escalating it if you bring more attention to yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the self is also solid, um, takes care of the self, too. Right. So when one is away, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> sister. I'm, yeah, I'm Clara Wysan, and I played the role of Julie, Peter's sister, and the upstander uh, in our, one of the upstanders in our, the play. And it was an incredible honor to perform the role um, with these actors and, and written by these young playwrights. So it was very powerful and I felt especially fortunate to have the opportunity to have that in inter interaction with the audience in each performance that we mm -hmm. did. It felt like a very um, real and an event that occurred with the audience, not for the audience. It was very moving. That's really quite good acting, isn't it? And good, good playing, good writing. Um, you are not you are an actor all the time. That I'm an your, actor and a, a director, yes. Uh-huh, okay. Yes. Uh, my name is Melissa Bowler, and I played um, basically all of the other characters that built up the story, including uh, Peter's mom and uh, Julie's boss and some of the cyber bullies and real-life bullies. So you have many hats. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Okay, yes, and your experience of working with Manton Avenue Project? Um, I've been working with the Manhattan Project for a, a long time now, I think uh, almost seven years, um, doing different different plays, and um, this was this was probably the most powerful play I've ever been involved with, and it was still uh, so fun and, and realistic, and I think that's the joy, is having such realistic dialogue to work with. Well, I want to congratulate you all. You are on your way. You're doing a really great job. I can't wait to see the next play that you do. I hope you come back to Good News Rhode Island. And all of you actors, uh, thank you for filling in and for being here today, but also for living into this play and putting flesh on it. It was a very good thing. Are you proud of them, too? Yes. <laughs> OK, and thank you, Amy. And you're watching Good News Rhode Island. Thanks for watching. Good news is right around the corner, and I bet you're going to help to make it. Too much. Okay. Okay.